The transfer window, guys, has slammed shut now. We've had more players come in, more players have left the squad as well, and today is also the German Cup second round. Let's get into today's episode, find out quite what's going on, and see how we do in the Cup. Welcome back then guys to the Red Devil Revival, now here for episode 23 of our series. And of course, as I've just said, we've had some more transfer business take place and the window has finally closed here in our Kaiserslautern save. Now, of course, if you missed the previous episode where we began our third season with the team, of course, our second in the Bundesliga 2, and I ran through the first lot of transfers in and out of the squad. There'll be a link right above me for that video if you want to go back and watch and see quite what went on. And of course, guys, before we do get going properly today, if you do enjoy today's episode, please do go and chuck a like down onto it. As I always say, every like here on the channel massively does help the channel out. And of course, if you do want to see any more of my content, such as my FM21 tactics videos, experiments, or the Red Devil Revival series, then guys, do make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell when notified when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. Now then though, we've played quite a few games since last time out and form has dramatically improved after the initial slightly shaky start in that very first game as well. But of course, I'll run through first of all the transfers in terms of who has come in and who has gone out. In terms of the transfers guys, we've had a few more players leave. I mentioned last time about possibly Kevin Kraus, one of our centre backs could be on the way out. He has indeed left. He has gone to Armenia Bielefeld for £475,000 possibly rising to £600,000 overall. It also meant he kept, got him off the wage bill because he was on an extortion wage of like eight grand a week and he was barely even playing in the team. So he has now gone, which is good. We have also sold our kind of fourth choice backup defensive midfielder, board midfielder type player in Benedict Kirsch. He played a few games for us last season. He only played eight, I think, in the league, around eight or ten or so, something like that. And we sold him to Lugo over in Spain for £110,000. Now with him, I didn't really need to let him go, but a big came in for him. He only had a year left on his deal. I felt, why not? Now the final sale, I had no intention at all to be making this sale. But Nuremberg came in with a bid and I couldn't say no. They came with a bid of initially, I think it was £800,000. And I said... No, what about, say, 1.2? Just to see if I can get something out of them. Because he only had 12 months left on his deal, so and he's not playing that many games. And they actually said, all right, then we'll give you 1.1 all up front. And I was like, um, okay. Like, he's an all right player. We signed him for almost or just under £10,000, and we've sold him for £1.1 million. I have no idea quite how we've managed it, but he has gone to Nuremberg, and it meant we could get a few players in. First of all, when Kraus left, we brought in another centre-back. His name is Joachim Nielsen, and he actually came in from Armenia Bielefeld. He was producing with them last season. He's another centre-back. He's a left-footed centre-back. He's not fit today. Surprise, surprise. He's on eight grand a week. He's quite pricey, but he's very, very good for this level. He's a very, very well-rounded central defender. And he's a left-footer as well, which is what I really wanted. And he can do the job, and I think he'll be a really good player. He's on a three-year deal, so he'll be until his early 30s. And yeah, I think he's a very, very good option. Swedish, but he does speak German. I don't know if he has German nationality. No, he doesn't, but he speaks German. So he's a very, very good option, I think, for us. At centre-back with Kraus going out, he comes straight into the first team. We've also signed another player on loan. This is my director of football brought this player in, and I was actually quite pleased with the deal. His name is Nico Melamed, I think is how you pronounce it, from Espanyol over in Spain. And he just comes in as more depth in midfield. I have released Johan Kabai. He was moaning and moaning because he wasn't happy about us signing other players. He was on quite a hefty fee, about five grand a week. No one wanted him. I couldn't even loan him out for no, no money. Nobody wanted him at all. So in the end, I asked the board to terminate his contract, and they agreed. So we got him out. This kid here from Espanyol, Nico Melamed, comes in. He's arguably better than Kabai. Obviously not mentally, but in physicals and technicals, he's about as good, if not better, and can do a good job. So I'm happy with him coming. He's only on five grand a week, so basically like the same money as what Kabai was on as well, and he's arguably a better player 
at this level. After we let Kobold go, I knew we needed to sign at least one more, if not two more centre-backs just for backup. The first one we signed was Williams Velazque or Velazquez. I'm not too sure. He's Venezuelan, a former Watford player. I think he was a Watford player who never got a work permit, so he's never actually played for my thinking game. And he's all right. He's quite a decent player. He only comes in on three and a half grand a week as an impact sub. He's happy to be a rotation option, basically. And he's a decent option. Doesn't know German yet, so he's learning it. But he's not going to play many games, so I'm not too fussed. He just comes in as a good backup. And then we finally, on deadline day, we made actually the two signings because Kobold left on deadline day. We signed another centre-back as well, this time on loan from Stuttgart. 200 grand's a fee. We're paying four grand a week for him. Again, another rotation option. Just with Kobold going out, I felt we needed to have a little bit of extra depth. And Maxime Awuja, Awuja, I'm not. I think it's Awuja, comes in from Stuttgart on loan for the season. A decent option. I think there's also an option to buy him permanently. Uh, yeah, for 250 grand. So if we think he's a good player, there is that availability to buy him as well. But that's all of our business. The window is closed. No one else is coming in. No one else is leaving. I have looked at a couple of players as well. I looked at another striker option, a Swiss striker who was actually suggested in the comments on Wednesday's episode, I believe. And unfortunately, he was a really good player. I can't remember his name, Wilfred something. And he just was too expensive, sadly. There was a few examples of that. There were some really good youngsters who I found some actual regen players as well who looked really, really good, but their clubs just wanted like two, three, four million pounds and we couldn't afford that. So we haven't got any of those youngsters in. But I think the team's in a really good position and it has shown so far in our schedule because we lost, of course, in that first match of the season when we took on Bochum away in the previous episode. It wasn't great showing. We wasted a couple of chances on Pellegrini. And then we had the German Cup first round where we got drawn up against Bissingen. I think they're like a fifth-tier side. They're a really, really small club. And it showed when we played them because we beat them 8-1. It could have been about 15. The keeper was their only decent player. We somehow conceded from a corner. I don't know how we conceded. But even so, we absolutely smashed them. We had a hat-trick from Uff. We had goals from Pellegri, Ritter, Nielsen, Butz and players like that. Really, really good showing. And then that then helped us going into the league because we then went up against Armenia Bielefeld. We had a poor start, but then Bielefeld got a player sent off. We came back into it, won it 2-1. We then played Heidenheim away and smashed them 3-0. Brace from Pellegri. He's really done well, has Pellegri. Karlsruhe, local derby, smashed them 4-0. Again, a red card, but that wasn't until later on. We were falling up after 30 minutes and then we didn't do anything else. But even so, really good performance again. Another brace from Pellegri. We then played Erga Berger and we drew 0-0. Defensively, we were great. Offensively, not so much in this one. And then we just taken on Leandro Eugensberg in our most recent fixture. Another load of goals from Pellegri. This time a hat-trick, we beat them 3-1. Crazy performance. We were really, really good, really, really well played. And as a result, in the Bundesliga 2, we are sitting in second place. We are a point ahead of Hamburg. We are five behind Darmstadt, who have won every game. Always good when that happens. But Plegri sitting there as top goal scorer. Salas has got the most assists in the league of six. Things are going well. Things are going very, very well indeed. Today, we've only got the one fixture. We're playing in the cup. We've been drawn, or we got through the first round for the first time in ages. And we've been drawn this time away to our arch rivals, again, Karlsruhe. So we'll be playing that game, and that'll be the only game that we're playing for today's episode. But as I say, things have been going very well. After the initial shaky start, it's really turned on its head, and we're looking really, really good. For this game, we're going to be playing a relatively full-strength side. I do want to do well in the cup. We've been crap every year in the cup. The first year we got to the second round, this round we're here now. And last year we went out in the first round. So I'd like to do better this year if possible. I've gone with a strong-ish squad. There is a few rotation options in and around the team. Fructal, who is our cup goalkeeper, is starting. I have promised he will play the cup game, so it makes sense for him to play. Played all right in the first one. He starts here today. It's in Hübner, Cecilini and Ramos. The same back three, I think, that played in the first match up against Bochum in the last episode. Pinto comes in at right back. I want to give Butson a rest. Butson, by the way, nearly actually left in the transfer. We had a bit of about a million pounds from Freiburg, I asked for 1.5, they said no, and then he asked to leave. I said if you get a bid of 1.5, he can go, no one else came in. So Butzen is still here, but could well be leaving in the January, possibly. Barrero, the Luxembourg defensive fielder, is coming in at DM for us. I am happy with him. He's not fully fit, but I'm going to give him at least the first half, and we'll probably sub him off for De Oliveira. I would imagine, we'll wait and see. De Bot comes in at left back. Salas and Maria in that midfield. They're playing really, really well. I've also been playing Ritter as the Manzalo as well, so from Maria and Ritter over. They've both been doing a good job. It's then Pellegri and Uff starting up front. Militieri is nearly back fit. I'm hoping we'll get to see him in this game. That's how we're lining up. Let's get into the match and we'll see how we get on. So if I submit our side then, guys, and let's see 
if we can get past this round and get to the furthest we've ever reached in the cup. The board only wants us to get to the second round, so we've already done what they expected. Of course, Karlsruhe are our arch rivals. This is very much a must win. And of course, Karlsruhe also have Marvin Pori up front for them, our former player from season one. I'm going to go and point the finger at the land, say we should be winning this one. No one was overly fussed, to be completely honest. I'll say I have faith in them to the rest of the lads. And everyone but Pinto is looking motivated, which is very, very good. Carl Drew's form by is awful. They play the exact same formation as us, which I find a bit fascinating, but they have slightly different roles in comparison to how we play this tactic. So last time we absolutely smashed them 4-0. I wonder if we can do a similar thing. This will only if we go and lose to them, but I say we are playing a few rotation players in comparison to what we played when we played them last time around. But I really do hope we can do well. I want to do well in the Cup this year. There's a lot of money to be made in the German Cup. So if we can get through to like the quarterfinals, maybe even later, that would be phenomenal. Last year in the game, by the way, Stuttgart, who of course were in our league, and I think they won it or finished second, reached the final and lost only to Bayern Munich in extra time. So if we can have a little bit of a decent run like they did last year, I'll be very, very pleased. This first half, by the way, has been very, very quiet. We've looked okay but very little to see from either side, I will be completely honest. It's saying I've been to sub off Barrero, so I will sub him off at half-time. He isn't fully fit. Great first half, lads. Great first half. Because in fact, this is the only game. It's going to be a very, very short episode today. I'm going to go and point the finger and say I'm not happy. It's not good enough from us whatsoever. Barrero can come off for Erhardt. And I do wonder if we should bring on Militieri. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's do it. We'll get him onto the pitch. We haven't seen him all season because he got injured in pre-season so we'll bring him on and hopefully we can have a good reaction with him on the pitch a double change at half time risky stuff it really really is but i'm confident we can go out and actually do something i mean i don't quite understand why this is now not working person to when we played them at home I, it's the same formations playing again so i don't quite understand what's going on i, I guess they're on camera again the lads just go shy that must be what it is they get all oh, the cameras on guys stop playing well stop playing well it's basically how it works. Oh, he's done quite well. He's got the ball. He's put it up now to Pellegri, who has been so, so good. As I say, he's in absolutely amazing form. I think he's got eight goals in eight games, or eight and seven, or something stupid. Ivo Pinto, Maria here. Come on, Maria. What are you going to do? He goes for it from range. First goal for the club for the youngster. He's a left footer, so I was a bit worried he was going to hit it on his right. But he did shape it onto his left in the end, thankfully. And a lovely... Little goal from Paleo Molia there. Really, really good stuff. And Erhardt gets the assist with that little pass inside him. Nice goal there. Very, very good. One thing I found by with this tactic is we do like the balls over the top with this tactic. We really, really do. I mean, we haven't got to see any of it in this match so far, but hopefully now we've scored, it'll mean Carlsruhe will have to push out. We can do it on the counter-attack. Okay, dangerous free kick here. Gondorf makes me think of Lord of the Rings because of Gondor. And okay, that was... Lucky, that could have been a lot worse from Gay there. I think Gay or Guy, I'm not too sure how you pronounce it, that player there. It was blocked by Debot. Gondorf's ball in now. Debot heads it clear again. Come on, can we counter-attack? Come on, Militieri, let's go. I don't know if the highlight's going to be over or not, but Militieri, he's fresh on the pitch. He's got fresh legs. Come on. His very first game of the season. What's he going to do? Probably the square root of bugger all. Debot now to Erhardt. Come on, play it inside. Salas, who's having a phenomenal season comparison to what he did last year. And Debot did... Absolutely nothing with that cross there. Fantastic stuff indeed. I'm going to sub the Bok off, I think, actually, because he's not having a great game. We'll get Hurch on at left back. And, I mean, if we see it out of a 1-0, I won't actually be disappointed. A win is a win at the end of the day. I mean, it gets us through to the next round of the cup. And another clean sheet on the board is always nice. But hang on, Tida's ball in there. Krapik oh, no, Fructal. I was about to say Krapik but it's Fructal playing today. Nice little claim there from our backup keeper. What's he going to do with it now? Please don't lump it. Okay, Ramos now. Okay, lumps it up, and Militieri flicks it on to Pellegri. This is what I was saying about playing the long balls up there, and Pellegri just took way too long. Oh, Pellegri. He does do that sometimes. He does just dawdle on the ball, and it's very, very frustrating when he does. Right, we're going to go a little bit time-wasting. We're going to go more disciplined, and I'm going to lower the tempo. Are we going to see this out? We'll go balanced. Oh, no. Gondorf. Lord of the Rings has an effort, but Fructal with a decent save. Well done there, son. Well done, Eddie. We're going to go full on time wasting now. Oh, don't concede. It's nearly the 90th minute. Okay, it's just been headed over. Considering how quiet the first half, second half's been a lot more action packed, but still not overly many clear cut opportunities. But I think we are going to do it. Indeed, we are. We have just about snuck past them. A very, very good game from Maria and a decent performance as well from Pinto and Fructal. Good stuff indeed there to see from those lads. We probably FM'd Carl Drew a little bit, if I'm completely honest. 
0.67 xG to 1.1, but I don't care. A win's a win. The strikers did absolutely bugger all in that game, but oh well, <laughs> I'm not going to complain. A good win, boys. Well done. They were looking inspired, mate, which is really, really cool. I don't know when the next round draw is. I'm not too sure, but one good thing from that is that we've been given 300 and £20,000, which is really, really good, and it really helps finance out. I'll show you the finance before we do finish off. We've got almost £15 million in the bank, and we're only paying one hundred and fifty grand a week in terms of wages, so things are looking very, very rosy for us here at Kaiserslautern. That is for sure, and of course, we keep doing well in the Cup, we do well in the league as well. It could be even better going forward. But of course, guys, as I say, that is the only match we're going to play today. Let's go to our schedule, find out what we're going to come back for the next episode. I reckon what we'll end up doing is because of the fact that Darmstadt are having such a good start to the season, we'll play the next three games off screen. I'll play Nuremberg, Hanover and Union Berlin. And we'll come back for a double header against SG Darmstadt and Fortuna Dusseldorf in that double header there. And we'll see how we get on up against first place in the Bundesliga team. Now, of course, that will be coming on Wednesday's episode. Overall though guys, that just about wraps up this video here today. A little bit shorter than normal, but of course we've had all the transfer roundup, all the business in and out, and of course run through all of the fixtures. And in that game was a decent performance from us, but it was just a really, really dull game in comparison. But even so, a win is a win, and that is the main thing. Because in fact there was a few rotation players in and around that squad when we played it took on Carl's Rudison. I'm pretty happy with the result. It got us past them and gets us into the next round of the cup, which is the main thing at the end of the day. Overall guys, I really do hope you have enjoyed this video here today. If you have, please do go and chuck a like down onto the video. And of course, looking forward to seeing any more of my content here on YouTube, such as my FM21 tactic videos, experiments, or the Red Devil Revival series. And do make sure guys to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. But guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time.